Are you a PhD student or a researcher who sometimes struggles to express the research ideas appropriately, precisely, using correct scientific language? Do you sometimes spend a lot of time stuck on your writing because you're looking for the right word and you cannot find it? Do you worry or about making grammar mistakes or do you actually make a lot of grammar mistakes and then have to go over your text many times or maybe even pay for proofreading? Would you like to learn how to express your scientific ideas precisely, concisely, using appropriate academic language and be able to do that without paying for proofreading services and without spending hours having to revise your work? Well then in this video I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that following this simple free software that I think nobody right now is talking about. There is a lot of hype right now when it comes to ChatGPT and AI tools to you know help you write a better thesis, research papers, help you improve your language. But the problem with those tools is that they've never been designed for this type of work. ChatGPT has never been designed to actually write research papers. It has not been designed to help you to write more precise, concise, grammatically correct sentences using scientific language. It's a very generic tool. So as a result, you shouldn't be surprised that it doesn't actually work that well when it comes to writing scientific papers. And there are much better tools. And in this video, I want to show you one specific tool that I've been recommending to my clients for a very long time now. And I've been using myself to write papers for high impact journals. This tool is completely free, very easy to use, and importantly, it's actually been designed for this type of work. It's been designed to help you to write correctly. It has been designed to help you to find the correct words for a given phrase and to ensure that you're using appropriate academic language. And it's also based on uh, data, language data from a lot of scientific papers. And the strange thing is that I haven't seen anybody really on the internet, on YouTube, talk about this tool. There is so much hype about AI and ChatGPT, but really I think we're getting lost in all this hype and I want to give you something that actually works, is very simple to use, is free and that you can use straight away today to write better papers or a better thesis. And before we dive in, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers write and publish better research papers in better journals and also write excellent theses. So in this video, I want to show you another website that's incredibly useful and that I personally use almost every day when I write academic texts or when I correct academic texts that um, you guys send me. So it's called Netspeak and the address is netspeak.org and this is basically a, a corpus. So basically this website has, you know, like a lot of texts, specifically quite formal and academic texts. And then it just, you know, kind of goes through all those texts, searching for the words that you're looking for and showing you what other words are related to that word, um, synonyms and things like that. So when you land on netspeak.org, you will see a little bit of explanation here of the different things that you can use. I personally think that it's the question mark, so this, and then the square brackets, and then the hash key that are really um, the most useful. The other ones, I, I found them to be slightly less useful. Not to say that they're completely useless, but they're less useful, I think, for academic writing. So let's explore how they work. Um, in one of the previous videos, I talked about the phrase make a contribution to, right? So maybe you're wondering, yeah, well, what adjective can I use in uh, this phrase? Make a blank contribution. So um, what Netspeak is going to give you is uh, the count, how many times this particular phrase has come up in the corpus and the percentage. So you can clearly see that significant is the, by far the most frequent. And then positive, major, valuable, substantial, and so on, right? Now, it doesn't mean that these words are not correct. They are, totally. It's just that, you know, by frequency, you can also see which one is more common. Now, obviously, if you, if you go down and, you know, uh, words that are used perhaps 1% or less, you know, you probably don't want to be using 
these words, right? Because uh, very often, um, like stuff like bigger, right? Um, special, huge, that either, you know, almost never used and certainly never used in academic writing, right? So you want to be looking at the most frequent here. So that's one thing that you can do. Use the question mark, you know, in place of uh, a word that you're looking for. Now, what you can also do is if we use the square brackets and imagine now you have two words that and you're not sure which word is correct or perhaps more frequent. So let's say if we put positive and then good uh, and then close the square brackets, right? So clearly you can see that, you know, positive is used 10 times as often, right? And, and good is, you know, it's not good in this case, right? So you want to go with positive. So that's square brackets if you're not sure uh, which of two words would fit. Another thing that you could uh, use is the hash he um, with a word. Okay, it didn't work for this one. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't always work, but what it does show you is the synonyms of that word with the hash key in that given phrase. So it only gives synonyms of significant that are used in the phrase make a contribution to. Because obviously if you go to a synonyms dictionary and you put significant, oh, you're going to get like a million possibilities, right? But 90% of them will not fit the particular phrase that you're trying to use, right? So this is super useful when you're writing something because very quickly, you know, say you've already said significant in, you know, two sentences ago and you want to say something similar but different, right? So you can use the hash key. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to work with me and my team one-to-one -to, -one to help you to write an excellent PhD thesis or publish research papers in Scopus Index journals, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below this video. We'll go over your biggest challenges and your goals and see if working together might be a good fit. And if it is, we'll roll up our sleeves, get into the trenches with you and help you to write and finish your next paper in 42 days or less. So book that free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below.